Now at this point, we need to start to work on our second part of our animation. And that actually starts up around the four second mark. Uh, you can see over here my timeline is a timeline indicator is at four seconds. So with that at four seconds, I'm going to select my particle layer. It's already selected. And I need to split that layer and every layer above. So I'm going to hit control click, control left click the world collisions and control left click the switch and then go to edit and split layer. And that means that all the previous layers, these are the layers that we just edited, split exactly at the four second mark and they end completely and then their duplicates kind of duplicates, same properties, everything is the same start at this point and we're gonna actually just change the settings of those layers so uh, we're gonna change the text here, World Collisions 2, we're gonna change that to our really cool drag that like up here for a second like there change that later that, you'll see that automatically rename my layer since it's a text layer and switch two, we can leave it to that. Particles two, we can leave it to that. Um, all right. Now we need to actually add a directional blur that comes in. This is the directional blur that comes in for the new scene. So we're going to go to switch to our second adjustment layer, just to keep things organized. And we're going to go to effects, directional blur, and blur length. And we're just going to drag these keyframes right to the four minute mark. So it's pretty much just taking the old layers, same keyframes, and moving them up. And it does the same thing, I believe, up to 15 seconds in, four minute, or yeah, four seconds, yeah, four seconds and 15 frames. That's 4.5 seconds, according to this composition. And that takes care of that blur. <coughs> now, the next blur that we need to apply while we're on this layer is the blur that occurs at the end of the animation and that is really in the last second. So I'm gonna select exactly at the seven second mark. I'm gonna insert another keyframe from there to the eight second mark. And we're gonna be using something called the Wiggler. That's the Wiggler. And if you can actually pull that up in After Effects by going to Window and the Wiggler. And it pops up this little box down here. What the Wiggler does is it takes the two selected frames in this case, we're going to be using these two frames, and it applies a series of keyframes based upon your settings in between them, and it creates a bunch of uh, random movement, much like the Wiggler expression. So we're going to set the noise type to jagged, the frequency to 20, and before we can modify the magnitude, we need to actually get this layer properly selected. And this is one tricky thing I really haven't figured out yet, but I, all I know is that if I control left click on my blur length layer, control click it again um, sometimes I have to click around basically you're just making sure that the only thing selected is this blur length like see there now it magically works it's kinda crazy like that after effects and it pops up and it allows me to hit the apply button but I'm not gonna apply it yet because when I control left click that blur length layer it selected all the frames and I just want these two frames like I said so to deselect these I hit control and alt I'm sorry control shift Control shift, left click. You're just control shifting, left clicking. Control plus shift and left clicking those two frames. And that deselects them. So now all we have is these two frames that are selected because these are the ones we're going to be applying the wiggler effect to. And uh, the magnitude is going to be set to 80. And we're just going to hit apply. And that is pretty much it. It did the rest. And I don't really want to waste your time with all the previewing. But what it does is it creates really jagged values that are applied to our blur length effect. And with that, we're just going to pull this back up, and we're pretty much done with the switch layer. Um, the, ne the next and last thing that we need to do is, of course, modify the rotation of our particle wave here, abstract wave. Um, I'm going to go back to our particles 2 layer. This is the one that we, uh, we got whenever we split the first layer, particles 2 layer and make sure it is that one selected and then you go to base form and we're gonna select the X rotation and we're gonna set that to a value of 110 let that load for a second and let's go back before the blur so you can see it and there it is now it's rotated the entire plane of particles rotated by 110 degrees creating a pretty neat effect and uh, yeah with that 
guys, again, my name is Graham with Tutorial Clarity. I hope you enjoyed this effect, and uh, take care.